all set here we go so sir what is going to be today's agenda let me just show that to you here we go so uh today we are going to kick off by solving some examples based on circular bodies so we are going to take a look at this example where uh, you can clearly see that uh, we have got two cylinders which are sort of in contact with each other and they are actually stuck between a vertical wall and this inclined plane it's a wonderful problem we'll be creating the entire free body diagrams the forces which are being applied on uh, on both of these cylinders because of this inclined plane and the vertical wall and the forces that they impart on each other okay due to this common point of contact p this is example number one the next example which we'll be discussing is again concerned with two cylinders here actually this entire system if you watch carefully is composed of two cylinders and the centers of these two cylinders are connected via a metal rod or a metal bar okay and you got to find this force p because of which this system does not collapse that means both the cylinders as well as the metal rods uh, make sure that they are in equilibrium so this is going to be example number two for you and the final example is going to be based on parallel forces that means these are what you call non-concurrent forces the lines of actions do not pass through a common point uh, this is uh, a bit different okay so you've got to have the right approach to solve such examples anyway so before getting started with with problems based on cylinders spheres and uh, rollers and even getting to parallel forces you first of all need to have a good idea as to how as to how you can create free body diagrams so let me just brief you in five minutes into all about free body diagrams and uh, here we go watch this <clears throat> just take a look at this example this is very interesting okay take a look here we go let me start with example number one so sir as far as we can see that uh, this could be a cylinder this could be a sphere this could be a roller okay circular body let's say this is a sphere i'm asking you how can you make the free body diagram of this sphere so you can say sir uh, this sphere must be having some mass m isn't it sir yes absolutely okay if it has got some mass m and if this sphere is lying on the ground on this planet earth the planet earth is going to pull this sphere in the downward direction with some weight that is equal to so that is equal to mg okay and here it is right yes sir but sir we also know that uh, this this sphere is at rest is in equilibrium sir there is only one force which you have applied over here there has to be another force which is going to be listen to what i am saying there has to be another force which is going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction why just to maintain equilibrium and that force comes from the ground and here it is that force okay so r as far as magnitude is concerned r is equal to mg but the direction is exactly opposite and this example that i have just given is what you call is what you call a two force equilibrium what two force equilibrium okay i hope you've understood this take a look at example 2 now this is also going to be very interesting just take a look so there is this sphere in contact with a wall and uh, in contact with sort of an inclined plane okay so <clears throat> what's so special let us try to make the free body diagram okay and try to work out what kind of an equilibrium is this two force three force okay let's see that let me free let me say let me free this ball from these supports from these surfaces okay here also we remove the surface to make the free body diagram and we are going to repeat the same for example two and for every example okay wherever you need to make the free body diagram let's make it once again okay it is free wherever i make these dash line these are just for references i have not made the surface again okay mark my words okay so as far as we can see that there are two point of contacts it is evident okay and the first thing being that this is going to have some mass m obviously the earth is going to pull it in the downward direction this way mg yes true 
yes sir this is true secondly there is going to be a reaction from a and from b okay so this reaction is going to be perpendicular to this surface with respect to this surface the reaction is going to act in this manner perpendicular to the surface i hope you get this is this clear to everyone i hope it is let me just check the mic okay so there is a reaction through a and it is something like this thirdly there is going to be a reaction through b okay and if you have seen my previous video well well first of all let me clarify for watching lecture number three make sure that you've seen lecture one and lecture two because those are the basics of statics okay all about coplanar forces were discussed all about two force equilibrium three force equilibrium were discussed Lamy's theorem sign rule everything was discussed in detail in fact problems based on strings were also discussed so make sure that you've seen those videos and if you have then you must know something about three force equilibrium if there are two forces passing through one single point and if the body is in equilibrium then the third force also has to pass through very same point this point this is how it goes okay so how many forces sir there are as many as three forces ra and mg and rb that means three concurrent forces so this example over here that is your example two is based on the equilibrium of three forces three force equilibrium let me put it this way lovely okay now let us move forward with another example this is example three right and just take a look let me make the free body over here okay sir okay let me shift my places now <clears throat> we zoom in so sir there are as many as two point of contacts at a and at b at a again normal to this inclined surface we are going to have a reaction at b also normal to this inclined surface we are going to have a reaction this way isn't it so let me make them here we go so uh, this is obviously going to have some weight weight acts at the center center of the body so this is how it goes okay and then secondly there is this point of contact a let me pass a reaction through this okay through b for this is a okay i've written this as a this is b and this is going to be a all right according to this point of contact so by now i'm sure you've got a fair idea as to how you can make the free body diagrams again what kind of an equilibrium is this as you can see this again is a case of three force equilibrium now let us talk about a much more advanced example take a look at this and first of all read this what have i just written this basically is a staircase by the way let's just raise the cylinder for minimum p okay so we are applying some force over here some force over here right what is the name of that force so the name of this force is p <clears throat> and the force p should be just enough listen to my words the force p should be just enough that this point of contact at a is broken if the point of contact a at a is broken that means there is absolutely no reaction through a the only reaction it is going to have is through b okay how can you make a free body of a cylinder or a sphere in such a case let me let me free the body over here all right so so obviously it is going to have some mass m so corresponding weight will be mg we just want to make sure that we just want to make sure that this cylinder rises if it rises then the point of contact at a is broken and if it, the point of contact is broken that means there is no reaction at a okay secondly there is this force p sir and uh, you can clearly see this force p we can make it over here also then if the lines of action listen to this okay this is three force equilibrium if the lines of action right pass through this common point then the third force or the line of action of the third force will also pass through this common point let me put it this way <clears throat> just a sec let me give you some options where is this reaction going to be here here or here option one option two option three you know what the correct option is option two 
if there are three forces acting on a body and the body is in equilibrium and as you can see these two forces are having a common point of intersection okay the lines of forces of force mg and p have a common point then the third force has to then the third force has to pass through this common point okay because if it doesn't no equilibrium if it does yes equilibrium and here it is again you can see three concurrent forces you can go ahead and easily apply lamy's theorem to work out the unknown forces so uh, in the initial 10 minutes i'm sure that you've got a fair idea as to how as to how free body diagrams pertaining to cylinders can be created one more example just one more watch this very interesting case again <laughs> it's a case where we have a staircase case of a staircase here it is in the previous example you saw that the, this this force p was directed towards the center isn't it yes sir this was directed towards the center but here you see this force p is at this very location so how do we create the free body diagram again the force p should be just enough that the point of contact at a is broken or is lost right how can we approach let us free the body from these supports horizontal and this horizontal and this vertical support done sir first of all it has got some mass m sir so there is going to be this weight mg okay that's the line of action secondly if the point of contact at a is broken right then there is going to be something i mean uh, of a reaction okay so the line of action if you watch this is force p that i have made that's mg's line of action this is force p's lines of action these two are intersecting at this very point if the body stays in equilibrium then the third force okay this the third force has to pass through the point of intersection of both the lines of actions this is the line of action of p this is the line of action of mg then the third forces lines of action will be passing through this common point here it is as simple okay if a body stays in equilibrium and three forces are acting on it right then the third force all the three forces will have a common point of intersection or you can also say then all the, the three forces and their lines of action will have a common point of intersection so this is just what i wanted to convey to all of you right so i hope this is clear to everyone and now uh, we can move ahead for solving some questions here we go let me start with example number 1 uh, let's start this okay let me read this for you so basically what we have we've got two identical rollers having their weight as 100 newtons done 100 newtons they are supported by a vertical wall okay this is the vertical wall their weights are 100 newtons 100 this is also 100 okay and an inclined plane this is the inclined plane okay the point of contacts are b and a done sir now if you watch you need to find the reactions at a b and c at a b and c we can do this the first thing to note is that these are rollers okay circular objects okay let me separate these two bodies and free from there and free them from their supports right and the angle that it is making over here with the incline is 30 degrees so let me separate the bodies and free them from their supports here it is done okay so we've understood this now what now what so i have marked them as 1 and 2 okay the weight of the cylinders are these two are identical so both of them are having the same weight as 100 newton so this is where i'm going to uh, put the weight right okay lovely there is this wall right so normal to this wall you will have the reaction this way so let me have the reaction r c this is point c therefore we have r c very easy then you have this inclined surface perpendicular to this inclined surface you are going to have a reaction this way this is going to be r b this is point b and therefore r b done sir so this is the point common point of contact so if this is ruler 2 and this is ruler 1 the ruler 2 is going to push on ruler 1 with a force rp okay in this fashion similarly the ruler 1 is going to react following newton's third law and it is going to push on ruler 
but here the rp's direction is going to be exactly opposite right all fair okay here we go so that's rp for you let us focus on this second ruler this is identical so it is going to have the same weight that is 100 newtons done sir done sir no issues okay and if you watch carefully the common point of contact is p so there is going to be rp here but there is one more force through this incline if you watch if you watch this is a so this is going to be ra and then this is the common point of contact rp right whatever forces were acting we have applied them on both the rollers okay and one more thing to notice that uh, <clears throat> if i can just draw a vertical a vertical i think you know this i don't need to tell you the angle made over here is same as the incline if the incline let me zoom in if the incline listen to this very carefully if the incline is 30 degrees then the angle made between the normal and vertical again if the angle at incline is theta then the angle made between the normal to the surface and the vertical is also theta 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 30 degrees 30 degrees same is the case over here also okay if the angle here is 30 degrees the angle between ra and the vertical is going to be 30 degrees you know this now lovely can we move ahead yes sir we can let's go uh, let's go ahead and make the force diagram this is something that i call the force diagram okay let's start with ruler two so uh i am basically interested in this point okay sir you are interested in this very point because this is where this is where the uh, i mean this is where the forces are intersecting or the lines of action of forces are intersecting right okay watch let me make it here also first thing 100 newton in the downward direction let me put it here done sir then you've got rp sir watch 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 this angle is 30 degrees so this angle also is going to be 30 degrees so let me make it here it is 30 degrees so the angle that rp makes with the horizontal is 30 degrees isn't it so here also the angle that this force rp makes with the horizontal is 30 degrees okay you've got to stay patient with me okay i explain in absolute detail <laughs> Even if you are a new learner for engineering mechanics, you will be understanding the concepts very well, right? I treat all the students equally. If you're a fast learner, then no problem for you. Increase the video speed and then you can learn at your own pace. You can fine tune, right? If you're a slow learner like me, right? Then keep watching at this pace. You will understand all the concepts beautifully. Don't worry. Okay. Let's proceed. Two forces worked out sir one more force left and as you said normal and vertical same angle okay angle of the incline 30 degrees so with the vertical as you can see ra makes 30 degree with the vertical so here also this ra makes 30 degree with the vertical this force diagram is going to come in very handy for us okay and as we can see that three forces passing through a common point this means i can simply apply lamy's theorem you can also go ahead and apply fx0, fy0. It's your choice. I'm going to be applying Lamy's theorem. Wherever I see three forces passing through one common point, I apply Lamy's theorem because it's easy. One simple reason. It's damn easy. Right? Why would you want to go into trigonometry, resolve the force into components? <laughs> Roller 2. Done, sir. Roller 1. Here we go. Let me create the force diagram. Okay? The first most simple force is this 100 Newton in the downward direction. Let me, I mean, I'm talking about this very point which I've created over here. So 100 Newtons, 100 Newtons, here it is. So what basically I'm doing is I'm using the principle of transmissibility of a force. Let's say there is this force F over here. So obviously this is going to be the line of action of that force. So this force over here can be shifted to a new location, but the line of action has to stay safe. The direction has to stay same. Uh, when I do this, what I'm doing is I'm using the principle of transmissibility. I hope you've got the point. Okay, done, sir. So the next thing is to use this RP. So if you if you watch carefully, this RP seems to be making some angle over here with the horizontal. This angle is 30 degrees. Let me zoom in. Okay, just check. Zoom. 
zoom 30 degrees angle of the incline angle of the incline isn't it yes 30 degree angle so with the horizontal the angle that it makes is 30 degrees and over here also with the horizontal the angle that rp makes is 30 degrees lovely the third thing is about rb just take a look this rb the angle made with the vertical is 30 and here also the angle made with the vertical is 30 is there any other thing left one more force is left well, brother, you cannot apply Leibniz theorem because you've got RC also. How many forces? Four concurrent forces. As far as ruler 2 is concerned, you've got three concurrent forces. Go ahead and apply Leibniz theorem. Here, there are four concurrent forces. You have got no choice but to apply the equations of equilibrium. So, RC, let me put it over here. Done, sir. Okay, let me take you to the new slide. And let us try to solve this. It's fun. Watch. This is going to be interesting. Here we go. Uh, how do we start? Um, just watch. Lewis theorem. Okay, sir. Let's apply. So why not start with hundred? Hundred. Okay. Divided by sine of the angle between the remaining two forces. Hundred divided by sine of the angle between remaining two forces. These are the remaining two forces. Okay. And the angle between them is this much. How can you calculate this angle, sir? Actually, this much is 30 and this angle over here is 90 minus 30, which is 60. So the angle between these two forces, let me zoom in. The angle between these two forces is 90 degrees. So you can straight away write 90 degrees. Okay, here we go. 100 by sine 90. <clears throat> Secondly, let's talk about RA. For RA, these are the remaining two forces and this is the angle. Okay, if this is the angle, you know. So, sir, this much is 30 degrees and this is 90 degrees. So, 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees. So, RA divided by sine of 90 plus 30, that is 120 degrees. Is this okay? Very, very simple, right? And the uh, final force is RP. So, the angle between RA, sine of the angle between RA and 100 has to be taken. So, it's very clear, sir, this is 90 degrees and this is, uh, how much? This is 60, okay? The best way to approach this is just write, 180 minus 30 that is 150 okay here it is rp upon sine of 150 done you just need to take these two into consideration you will get the value of ra and then you need to take these two into consideration you will get the value of rp it's very simple just do the math this is what you get ra and rp done done sir done 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 okay now what sir, <clears throat> just take a look at this. How many forces are there? Sir, there are as many as 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 concurrent forces. You cannot apply Lewis theorem. You have to go with summation fx0 and fy0. Okay, let's go for fx0. Again, you can see that you've got components. So RB can be resolved into two components. This is going to be, sir, RB. Let me use a different color. Uh, which one, which one, which one shall I use? Uh, let me use white color. RB cos 30 rb is going to have a component here also rb sin 30 then this rp is going to have two components also this is going to be rp cos 30 and over here in the downward direction rp sin 30 okay watch this upwards positive rightwards positive okay downwards negative leftwards negative you know this fx0 what have we got so uh, when we do fx0 so basically we are dealing with rc that is positive sir rp cos 30 is negative rb sin 30 is also negative so i have written it this way once again let me show you okay and uh, rc rb and rp so we have the value of rp as 50 done very nice you can put it over here so we've got an equation now between rc and rb so one equation and two unknowns we cannot go further so this basically is equal to zero okay okay one equation and two unknowns you cannot go further you need another equation okay between these two same variables so let's go for summation f y zero so uh as far as we can see this is uh upwards rb cos 30 this 100 newton is downwards this rp sine 30 is also downwards so these are the forces we got rb cos 30 minus rb rp sine 30 minus 100 is equal to zero this is what you get. Again, you can put the value of RP as 50 Newton from over here. And you can simplify this in terms of RB. Okay. 
and uh, yes let me zoom in now <laughs> as soon as i put the value of rps 50 okay from over here what i have is one equation one unknown and you can solve for rp this is what you get and when you put this value of rb over here you can get the value of rc this is what you get done problem number 1 is finished let me erase all of these components okay is this clear to everyone and if it is let us now switch to the next example which by the way is going to be this one first of all read this and let me go out of the picture okay let me have some water read this two cylinders one and two are connected by a rigid bar a rigid bar ha 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 so there are two cylinders one and two connected by a rigid metal bar Okay, rigid bar means even on applying forces, eh, there is no change in its shape or size. That's a rigid bar. Negligible weight, so you don't have to take the uh, weight into consideration of this bar. Find force P for equilibrium. Okay, find force P for equilibrium, and uh, take mass M1 and M2 as 100 kgs and 50 kgs respectively. Okay, so. Uh, we've been given the masses and not their weight so their weights have to be calculated by the way it's very easy uh, if you want to calculate the weight of m1 right 100 into 9.81 simple math okay and by the way uh, the the best approach to solve this question is to immediately start creating a free body diagram okay and uh, let me show this to you this is going to be interesting very very interesting okay that's why i put the thumbnail of my video as of this very problem itself so uh, these are the two cylinders and their centers have been connected with the help of this metal bar okay done so and how much force p you should apply over here at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal so that this entire system of two cylinders connected at their centers with the help of this metal bar does not collapse okay does not collapse okay so for the system to not collapse you have to find that force p a very interesting question watch this right it is all about creating the free body diagrams <clears throat> the first thing is uh, the metal bars it appears as if these cylinders are going to push on the metal bars the cylinders on the metal bars like this and the metal bar is going to react following newton's third law okay action has an equal and opposite reaction so if the cylinder one is pushing on this metal bar the metal bar is going to push on the cylinder this way and the metal bar is going to push on the cylinder two in this fashion so everything stays in equilibrium all the forces are balanced right and that is exactly going to happen because what i am basically concerned with is the free body diagram of cylinder one and cylinder two now from the metal bar cylinder one is going to force get a force in this fashion and from the metal bar cylinder two is going to get a force in this fashion and uh, here it is lovely isn't it how did we get this 15 degree sir because it has been given okay here the incline is 45 and here the incline is 60 degrees i hope you will understand this okay stay patient you have to be patient while solving problems on mechanics right here we go <clears throat> okay sir uh 100 kg sir so uh, we can write this as 100 into 9.81 this is going to be equal to 981 newtons and here it is Okay, sir. So one force you have already put, and sir, there is going to be one more force over here, and uh, we can simply write this as R A. Okay, this basically this is point of contact at A, and that's why you've got R A. Done, done, sir. Done. Any other force which is going to act on cylinder one? No, sir. And uh, this cylinder two is having a mass of fifty, so fifty into nine point eight one. Will be equal to four ninety point five. You can do the math. Okay, done, sir. Uh, one, two, three. One more force from this very point of contact. That is B. That is R B. Done. Free body created. Now let us create the force diagram using the principle of transmissibility. How? Let me show this to you. It's very easy. Okay, I'm talking about this very point. This is the point of intersection of. lines of action of force f 
नाइन एटी वन न्यूटन एंड आर ए दिस इज दॉइंट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी हैव दिस नाइन एटी वन इन दी डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन वट एव आई जस्ट यूज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ट्रांसमिसिबिलिटी ओके आई हैव शिफ्टेड दिस नाइन एटी वन दिस इज द लाइन ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ नाइन एटी वन फ्रॉम ओवर हियर टू दिस वेरी स्पॉट ये चलता है मैकेनिक्स में प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ट्रांसमिसिबिलिटी राइट सेकेंडली यूव गॉट दिस आर ए so so as far as i can see this ra is making some angle with the vertical some angle with the vertical this this incline angle of the incline is normal and vertical also subtend the same angle 60 degree so here also this with the vertical angle is 60 degree with the vertical the angle is 60 degree done sir the next thing is this force f sir this force f actually uh, if there is a 15 degree angle over here so then you can say that this 15 degree angle over here also what do we call the this pair of angle alternate angles or something like that corresponding no no i think i think it is alternate angle uh, please let me draw it down uh, let me know in the comments right so this uh, angle over here is also going to be 15 degrees so with the horizontal the force f makes an angle of 15 degrees right okay sir all right how can we proceed now so the force diagram has been created over here now let us talk about cylinder 2 and its corresponding force diagram first of all 490.5 in the downward direction and then you've got this force f making making an angle of 15 degree with the horizontal with the horizontal so force f making an angle of 15 degree with the horizontal done and then you've got this rb over here again with the vertical it is making an angle of 45 degree okay and here also with the vertical this rb is going to make 45 degree angle second finally we have with this force p making an angle of 45 degrees with this horizontal so with this horizontal force p 45 degrees are done let me take you to the next slide the only thing left is to go ahead and either apply the equations of equilibrium or go for lamis theorem it's your choice okay what shall we go with i think we should uh, go with uh, lamis theorem just to kick off just to kick off take a look okay as here we only have to deal with three concurrent forces whenever you see three concurrent forces uh, my mind is delighted right because i can go ahead and use lamis theorem so sir let me start with 981 okay then these are the two forces remaining what is this angle sir this is 60 plus uh, how much is this uh, sir this is going to be 90 minus 15 that is 75 that is 75 plus 60 let me write it simply 981 over sine of 75 This is seventy-five plus sixty. Understood? Okay, sir. Then let us talk about this force F. If this is the force F, then sine of the angle between the remaining two forces. Sir, this angle is very simple. Sir, this is one eighty minus sixty. That is one twenty. Done. Done, done, done. And what about R A? Sir, this is the angle between the remaining two forces. How much is this angle? Sir, uh, uh, this is ninety and this is fifteen. So sine of ninety plus fifteen. Done. Done, 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 done. You just need to. take this equation into consideration you got to solve for f okay sir then you need to take these two into consideration and then you have to solve for ra okay sir what okay these are the answers that you get lovely easy everything is simple you have to follow the approach that i am teaching right follow this approach this is going to benefit you immensely and now once i have explained given a demonstration of these two examples you can go at whichever book you follow whichever book you follow you can go ahead and solve problems based on based on equilibrium of circular bodies mark my words you are going to <sighs> what can i say <laughs> you're going to rock next using equations of equilibrium so uh, as you can see there are 1 2 3 4 4 concurrent forces so lamis theorem namaste Okay, what you can do is use the equations of equilibrium. Let us start with summation f x zero. And sir, this f is going to have two components: f cos fifteen and over here f sine fifteen. Yes, sir. Very nice. This p is going to have two components, sir. This is going to be p cos forty five. Okay, sir. And one more component over here. This is going to be p sine forty five. Lovely. This r b is going to have two components: one over to this side r b cos forty five. One more component. over here rb sin 
45 lovely now you need to see your some common sense whatever four sides are directed upwards take them as positive and ones in the opposite direction take them as negative let me just explain and the ones to the right plus to the left minus so to the right we've got this force f cos 15 positive to the left we've got rb sin 45 we've got p cos 45 those two are negative okay very easy let's use this equation of equilibrium f cos 15 minus p cos 45 done minus rb sin 45 done lovely okay so is there anything that we have already calculated yes sir 1201.47 we've already calculated so you can plug in the value of f from over here into this equation so now there are only two unknowns p and rb sin 45 this is what you have okay let's call this as our equation number 1 done sir now let us talk about equation uh, number 2 for that you need to go for summation fy equal to 0 let me switch to a new place okay sir <coughs> for fy equals to 0 sir we've got rb cos 45 in the upward direction that is positive we've got f sin 15 negative 490 negative we've got p sin 45 negative let me frame an equation here it is please check it please check it okay one force in the upward direction this is it while the remaining three forces in the downward direction and clearly indicated using this negative sign right now do we have the value of rb no sir do we have the value of p no sir we have the value of f so let me put this value of f that is let me get out of the way let me put this value of f from over here into this equation so again you can see one single equation and there are two unknowns let me simplify this okay i'm sure you can simplify all of these things very easily you just need to solve these two equations and solving these two equations is no big deal sir okay we've got a calculator go to mode go to equation for 5 choose one uh just punch in the values so the first value is this is p r b and then over here p r b okay this is if you have p and r b right you have a p and r b over here also same pattern okay okay cos 45 cos 45 done r b's coefficient is sin 45 so this is going to be sin 45 done and to the right of equal to sign we have got 1160 1160 enter okay no 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 i should go back 1160.53 and enter now this is negative sign 45 sir so minus sign 45 close the bracket and enter so this is plus cos 45 cos 45 bracket close enter and what else what else is there and uh, 801 sir this is 801.46 and enter again enter once more some calculations will be done 253.9008 second answer is this is by the way this value is for p this value is for rb 1387 let me check let me check okay here it is okay these were the same answers which we got don't believe me you want to see the calculator again here it is check that's y for you y is rb let me show this to you once again this x is here that is p 253.9 253.19 hit enter again to get the value of rb that is 1387 1387 brilliant brilliant shift 9 3 equal to reset done so two problems have been worked out uh, okay and as far as uh, problems based on st springs and strings is concerned this is something that uh, i have already spoken about in my previous lecture okay go ahead and watch it right all right now uh, there is one more thing which i wanted to discuss with you written it parallel forces okay let me have some water and now we are going to take a look at an example based on parallel forces very interesting case watch it oh my god here we go parallel forces so here it is 
first example of parallel force okay so there are two bars right in hindi we call it chhad chhad kehte hain usko theek hai um they are rigidly connected and connected in such a fashion that uh, the angle between the two bars that is ba and bc has been maintained at 60 degrees okay so and suspended via string ad it's suspended okay in hindi we say latkaya hua hai theek hai suspended at a so there is a string over here wherever you see a string and some weights connected to it we can say that there is some tension in that string so there is going to be some tension along the string ad or cable ad you need to find the position of equilibrium as defined by angle alpha for equilibrium conditions calculate alpha this is what you are expected to calculate can you do this you surely can again here the forces are going to be of a parallel nature and yet the entire body okay this this system of two bars will maintain equilibrium and it is for this equilibrium alpha has to be calculated how should we approach let me make a line diagram for this purpose here it is watch this a very interesting case and you can clearly see that uh, the length here is l if the length is l and the weight is w if the length becomes 2l then the weight will become 2w okay both the rods are of made up of the same material this is the something that i have assumed right linear properties okay so agreed now watch um, let's take a look at a this is a string okay this entire arrangement has been suspended via string ad so there is going to be some tension over here tension so this is the line of action why have i made the lines of action you'll understand don't worry if there is a rod over here and if i say that this rod is having a weight w where will that weight act you'll say that so the weight is going to act exactly at the center right yes here also the weight is going to act exactly at the center the length is l so from a the distance is going to be l by 2 you can also say from b the distance is going to be l by 2 and that is exactly what i have written okay sir understood this is the line of action okay l by 2 from a as well as b in the same fashion this rod 2l is going to have is going to have a weight 2w from c the distance is going to be l and from b the distance is going to be l okay the length here is l so l by 2 l by 2 here the length is 2l so l and l i hope you got this right and the angle over here is alpha i'm not saying this this has been given in the question it is for this angle alpha uh, it is for the equilibrium conditions that you need to calculate this alpha okay let me show this to question to you find the position of equilibrium as defined by angle alpha right okay how do you approach how do you approach such a case hmm okay so uh, let us do some construction so if, if let me draw a parallel line this is alpha uh, this line and this line is parallel so this line is going to act as a transversal if the angle over here is alpha this also is going to be alpha isn't it yes sir let us draw it and uh, you know very well that the angle this angle is 60 degrees agreed yes sir so this remaining angle this angle over here is going to be so 60 minus alpha lovely i now also have to do some constructions and here they are so why have you done such constructions there is a reason <laughs> what's the reason sir just a second what kind of forces are we dealing with so we are dealing with parallel forces t 2w w all of these forces are parallel in nature you can see this they are parallel to each other right so there are going to be moments okay so when you take the moment about point a okay so uh, until now we have seen most of the problems we have solved we have used summation fx summation fi now we'll also use moments all of this and equate them to zero for equilibrium conditions right this is what we are going to do so apart from fx fi you can also go for moment equal to 
and it is uh, this moment equal to zero concept that we are mostly interested in as far as this very problem is concerned watch this a very interesting case okay here we go so if you take the moment about a you don't have to worry about force t because it is passing through a its moment is going to be zero so what are you saying sir listen to this let me make a point let's say this point is a and let's just say that this there is this point there's this force t over here so what my question is that uh, calculate the moment of force t about uh, about a moment of the force t about a let us keep this simple moments of force t about a so th this is going to be we'll simply drop a perpendicular over here let's say this is x so we'll say so this is going to be t into x right and since this is sort of creating a clockwise moment at a we'll say this is going to be negative right okay okay i hope you have got this point now if i bring this closer if the force is brought closer this will reduce if this x value will reduce then the moment is going to reduce let's say let's say that this distance reduces to such an extent that this force t passes through this point a if this force p t passes through this point a then this x would become zero in such a case then the moment will also become zero that's why if you are taking a moment about some point a if you are taking a moment about some point a and you find a force which is actually passing through a then the moment of this force t is going to be zero this is the basic idea that i wanted to convey understood okay so there are only two forces left one is this force w while the other is this force 2w it is the moment of these two forces that you now have to focus on okay and we know for a system which is in equilibrium the moment of all the forces the moment of all the forces is going to be equal to zero okay you can take the moment about point a you can take the moment about c you can take the moment about b you can take moment r moment about q s anywhere on the screen you can take the moment it will always work out as zero okay if you are concerned with the body which is going to stay in its equilibrium right that is true now sir actually when you take moment about a you have to deal with force w so this is going to be the perpendicular distance what distance sir distance ar so we are actually interested we and along with me all of you are interested in calculating this perpendicular distance ar okay that's why the construction now you get the point secondly it is this w two w's moment that we are interested in sir then this is going to be the perpendicular dropped from a this is the perpendicular distance sir and it is this very very small tiny distance that all of us are interested in how to calculate these distances so we are going to use trigonometry okay i've been waiting since class 10th to use trigonometry use it ah <laughs> uh. Sometimes I don't know my neck hurts badly. Even I've got a pillow behind me. Still, as soon as I start writing, within five minutes, I sort of get a pinching feeling. Please recommend some chairs for me, if you know, and give me some Amazon or Flipkart links. Write down in the comments. Now this has been going on since years. I don't know. Sometimes, in some some particular seasons, I find this pain, pinching pain, right? in this sort of neck and shoulder region very bad and it is because of this reason i hadn't been able to take classes last week i was even avoiding sitting at my desk okay <laughs> some people at my home told me that beta zameen pe sone ka ek gadde mein nahi sone ka i used to sleep on the floor especially during the day i mean during the day in the afternoon after having lunch sleeping for half an hour or one hour is, is sufficient uh, that helped me that helped me i don't know what's happening maybe i mean maybe when you write this this there is some muscle which stretches and i also have to operate with my left hand also to change the color of the pen and stuff like that right <sighs> teaching takes a huge toll on your body even i when i used to teach engineering drawing in college those classes used to be from 3 to 4 hours long 3 to 4 hours long classes you have to make all the drawings on that green board it takes a lot of toll on your body back then also i used to 
have this pinching pain behind my neck even while driving the bike it's been around for quite a long time okay anyways i'm comfortable now don't worry okay this pillow is really helping <sighs> by the way uh what was i talking about ha ah, okay i was just telling you why i have done this construction right to find the perpendicular distances it is this distance ar and as that i am pretty much interested in so what about ar can you calculate ar yes i can let me show this to you ar here it is what is this angle take a look sir this is 60 minus alpha these lines are parallel this is the transversal if this is 60 minus alpha then sir this has to be 60 minus alpha okay what sir 60 minus alpha lovely what is this so this is a that's r that's m okay zoom in how much is this length so this is l by 2 all right what is it so l by 2 l by 2 okay so this distance over here is going to be simply l by 2 l by 2 cos of 60 minus alpha okay so let me just write l by 2 cos 60 minus alpha now you have understood okay basic trigonometry if the hypotenuse is at a certain angle with a line is the hypotenuse is at a certain angle with a line then on that line you will have the cos component and in this line we'll have the sin component this rm will be sir l by 2 sin 60 minus alpha lovely you know this done okay now you know the reason secondly you uh, also said that we need as yes we need as can you get the value of as yes sir we can get the value of as actually so uh, let me erase this okay uh, for getting as as sir is actually is equal to pq this as is equal to pq yes agreed and in order to get the value of pq you need to subtract bq from bp so bq from minus bp no 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 bq from bp so bp minus bq okay this is what you need to do so can you calculate bp can you calculate bq that's what we are interested in again take a look take a look at this triangle this is let let's let's talk about uh, okay let me talk about bp let me erase all of this take a look at this triangle one more stroke one more stroke <laughs> this is alpha this is l so if this is l this is going to be l cos alpha and this is going to be l sin alpha agreed let me zoom in so this is the hypotenuse sir and this angle made is alpha so this is going to be l cos alpha that is bp that is exactly what i have just written and similarly sir uh, take a look at this triangle now okay let me zoom in what is the length sir the overall length of bar ab is l so if this is l and if this is 60 minus alpha this has got to be this has got to be l cos 60 minus alpha here it is okay so now you have the value of as let me zoom in again sir as is actually equal to pq and pq is is equal to l cos alpha minus l cos 60 minus alpha which i have indicated over here <laughs> lovely lovely it takes a lot of effort to create such animations right a step by step approach requires a lot of simplification okay so uh, these are were the calculations now let's go ahead and let's apply the equations of equilibrium let's start with moment equal to zero about a as you know so uh, there are only three forces and out of those three this point t is actually passing through a its moment is zero you know the reason now okay secondly uh, this weight w this is the force w multiplied by perpendicular distance okay so this force w is creating a clockwise moment at a if it is clockwise that means it is negative negative w into ar this is what i am going to write yes sir correct secondly this force w not w but 2w multiplied by this very small perpendicular distance how much is this so this is pq as whatever so anti clockwise 
positive 2w into a is the answer. Now, let us plug in the values. AR. Sir, AR uh, is actually L by 2 cos 60 minus alpha. Put it over here. And uh, what about AS? AS is actually this much. Put it. Let me enjoy. Okay. <clears throat> write the term one is negative one is positive write the terms on either side of the equations okay on either side of the equal to side right so now sir the w's are going to cancel and the you can also take l as common from both the terms over here so l is also going to cancel each other so the only thing we are left with this is an half over here so you can simply write 0 0.5 cos 60 minus alpha and here you can write 2 cos alpha minus 2 cos 60 minus alpha okay sir now what to do now what to do? <sighs> Listen to this. Minus 2 is over here. 60 minus alpha. This is 0 0.5. 60 minus alpha. Bring this over to this side. This is going to be 2.5. Cos 60 minus alpha equal to 2 cos alpha. Open this. Sir, uh, this is something that we've learned at school. Sir, cos of A minus B. Cos of A minus B. We know that it is cos A, cos B plus sin A, sin B. You know this. You know this? Yes, sir, we know this. Apply. Cos 60 cos alpha plus sin 60 sin alpha. Okay, this is 2 cos alpha. Done, sir. Now, uh, do the multiplication. Cos 60 is 1 by 2 and 2.5. 1 by 2 into 2.5 is going to be 1.25. So, 1.25 cos alpha. Let me write this. Similarly, 2.5 multiplied with sin 60, you will get 2.165. Okay, this is very, very simple. You just do the math. Uh, cross. Okay, sine by cos will become tan. Just do the math. This is what you get. And do the inverse. Alpha equals uh, tan inverse 0.346. And uh, the value of alpha that you'll get in degrees is 19.1. Lovely, isn't it? So uh, this is exactly what I wanted to convey in today's session. I'm sure if I have demonstrated three examples to you, you can go ahead and solve 30 examples from whichever book you follow. Okay, be it problems based on concurrent forces, you can go ahead and solve them. First of all, your first uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. <laughs> this is a term that I've seen in movies. What is the SOP? The first standard operating procedure is, if you see three concurrent forces, go ahead and use Lamy's theorem. But, but you should have the skills to go ahead and um, create the free body diagrams because that is the, that is the initial approach. Okay, so make sure that you are well versed with all of those things. The second thing is if you see more than three forces, four forces or five forces, don't hesitate to use the equations of equilibrium. Fx0, Fy0, moment zero, go ahead and use them. And if you see parallel forces, okay, again, you've got Fx0, Fy0 and moment zero. Now, uh, these were the things that I wanted to discuss. And in the next lecture, in lecture number four, I'll be talking about Cases of forces in a plane, general case of forces in a plane. This is again a very interesting topic. Okay. Uh, the forces are not going to be concurrent. These are not concurrent forces. Right. It's a very interesting case. Then in lecture five, we'll be talking about uniformly varying loads, uniformly distributed loads. Uh, these are going to be very interesting. Okay. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Good day.